Welcome back to Miller's in Motion. We are on board the beautiful Royal Caribbean's Harmony of the Seas. We're gonna take you around in kind of the path of our normal day. We've seen a lot of videos when we were picking a cruise to go on, and they all kind of just do deck by deck and those types of things. So we wanted to take you in a little bit different of a format of how we use the ship. So let's dive into Harmony of the Seas. So one of the things on the cruise ship that Laura and I really, really were disappointed was the mattress on board. It was nowhere near as good as our mattress that we keep in the RV. So we want to say a big thank you to RVmattress.com from Brooklyn Bedding for sponsoring this video. And one of the things we couldn't wait to do when we got back was actually sleep in a high quality mattress that's built for our space. Who is RV Mattress or what is it? It is a Brooklyn bedding brand and they are actually known for like top of the line quality and comfort. They have a factory based out of Arizona that ships directly to you and they offer several different mattress options, three different firmnesses and over 20 sizes, some of which are RV specific. We personally went with the signature hybrid style of mattress. This is the RV King 72 by 80 and we did add the little pillow top which we really like and it's cooling as well. And in the back we did a signature hybrid mattress as well in a queen size but we didn't put the pillow top on that one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> as a bigger guy with a bad back thanks to years of golf too, having a good mattress in the RV was such a big deal. So in addition to everything Lauren talked about, you get a 120 day sleep trial. So if you don't like it, you just give them a call and they take care of it. Mm -hmm. And a 10 year warranty, which is good because I'm really rough on things. Imagine that. I don't know what you're talking about. To learn more about rvmattress.com and the Brooklyn Bedding mattresses, you can check out rvmattress.com forward slash Millers in Motion. I know it's our name. It's difficult. You can also save 25% off by using our code Millers in Motion. All right, let's start with breakfast. The most important meal of the day, you know, aside from coffee. There are a couple of different options on the ship. There's obviously main dining room. We haven't been there yet, but we're still going to show you. Uh, there is the Solarium Bistro, which is very similar to the buffet we're going to show you, but it's adults only, and that's kind of nice first thing in the morning. There's also a cafe on uh, Deck 8 called uh, the Park Cafe. They have a very limited uh, selection, but it is nice if you want to sit in that outdoor kind of environment. But the place that we've hit the most is the Windjammer Buffet. So after breakfast, it depends on if we're in port or if we're on a sea day. If we're at a sea day, we will typically go change into our swimsuits and come down to the pool. We like to get there a little early because sometimes it can be hard to get uh, chairs the later end of the day you go. Uh, Harmony of the Seas has three full-size pools and full-size for a cruise ship is what I mean. Uh, and they also have a splash pad. Uh, in addition to that, uh, they also have three water slides that you can see behind me. In addition to the pool areas, this is the solarium. Now this is an adults only section where you can kind of lay out. They have quiet time hours from like 10 to six every day and they don't even like pipe in music. So it's nice and chill. They have several whirlpools or hot tubs, but there is no pool back here, which we kind of feel like they missed the mark on. I would have loved an adults only quiet pool here at, at, at this location. And also this section has its own um, kind of eatery. It's called the Solarium Bistro, where they have similar offerings to the buffet, just on a smaller scale. And it goes without saying, there are bars everywhere. If we took uh, time to show you all the bars, that would be its own video. So just know they're there. On the aft of the ship or the back of it behind the pools is the sports deck. Now, when I say sports deck, it's got all kinds of stuff. So as you can see behind me, they have two of these flow riders, which is like a surfing, simulator and then if we move over a little bit here you can see that's called the abyss it's actually a dry slide that takes you all the way down to deck eight i think deck eight so up here they also have the what's right now pickleball court but it is a basketball court slash soccer court as well so right now they're doing adult pickleball in the morning and then as you cross over uh, you can see that royal caribbean logo over there 
and then this right here that's actually a zip line and on the far side over there you can see that is all miniature golf they call it harmony dunes also you can notice a unique feature as we are done over there at the harmony dunes because there's this big hole in the middle of the ship i say it's not a hole it's a kind of valley and there's a bunch of balconies there those are what's called an interior balcony which is unique to royal caribbean uh, that's actually the room category we have at the moment but we will go over that in a little bit more detail here pretty quick unpopular opinion i like watching the back of the ship more than i like watching the front i don't know that's an unpopular opinion most people like to go to the front and do the titanic or something yeah. and i think that's bad juju so i'm sticking at the back of the ship <laughs> <laughs> remember what lauren said about bars look another one they're everywhere I'm pretty sure they'd rather serve you alcohol over water on this cruise. This is one of my favorite attractions on the ship. This is the free ice cream. I, I would call it Froyo, but it's ice cream. So typically after pool and gym time, mm -hmm. uh, and I will point out that uh, time has passed significantly with that pool and time section, that is true. Uh, we will come down and grab some lunch somewhere. So for us, we have a tendency to come down to the boardwalk quite a bit because they have a lot of options and it's a little bit more casual and fun. So typically for lunch, we come down to the boardwalk area. You can go many places like the main dining room. There's a bunch of other options. And if you have an ultimate dining package, you can go to a specialty restaurant that we'll get to here in a little bit. And this is a good time to also talk about the difference in specialty and non-specialty. Down here, you have two specialty options for lunch and dinner. Sabor, which is like a Mexican or Tex-Mex style food. Honestly, it's not worth your time if you're into Mexican food. And then Johnny Rockets. Johnny Rockets is $15 uh, or you can use your specialty dining. Uh, but those seem to be our two kind of lunch spots that we're big fans of. Also, you can see a different view from some of those interior balcony cabins above us. Um, there's some over Central Park, which we're going to next, and then there's some over the boardwalk. Uh, for me, the ones over the boardwalk would be a little louder. I don't know if that's actually true or not because we stayed in ones over Central Park. In addition to down here, they have the Aqua Theater. So the Aqua Theater's home is the fine line. That is the water and aerial show uh, that we went to earlier on in the cruise we will definitely show you portions of that if we're not showing you something in this tour video just know we have two other videos coming that are our couple of days at sea where we did a bunch of the shows and things on board and then we highlighted a couple of our at port days uh, and in the three different ports we hit on this itinerary and last but not least this is also if you remember from the sports court we were just at the abyss the entrance to the abyss is uh, way up there and this is the end of it right there. And this is the promenade. So this is probably the hub of all things, the cruise ship. Um, this is the central meeting point. They do a lot of the after parties here. And then they also, your ship entrance is also here as you come in. After lunch, we often head inside somewhere like the Schooner Bar behind us. And there are a lot of activities on board like trivias and game shows and things like that. This is obviously a bar so you can get a drink as early as 10 a.m. Um, later in the evening, it will turn into more of a piano bar kind of style. Uh, but we, we enjoy coming somewhere like this for a little downtime in the afternoons. So as we make our way down the main stairs into the lower portion of the promenade, there's a few things I want to point out and just show you. So this is the bionic bar. Again, like Lauren said, bars everywhere, but this one's kind of fun because those two robot arms, because those two robot arms literally make the drinks for you and you order them on an iPad. This big void in the middle <laughs> at the moment is called the rising tide bar. So it actually goes up two or three different decks as well. On the other side, you have guest services. So if you had a problem or had an issue, you would take care of it there. There are also a bunch of shops lining the promenade. So if you are into that kind of thing, you can definitely shop. Then you have Cafe Promenade, which Lauren talked about earlier, just kind of a small bites thing. And two of the bigger restaurant locations are right here as well. On the left, a pub and bonnet, which is like an English style pub. And on the right, Sorrento's, which is pizza. That is the only venue besides room service that is actually open. 24 hours a day you can get a slice of pizza so now you're asking is the pizza worth it meh it got better as the cruise went on that's the one thing we've noticed is that there's been a little bit of inconsistencies with food not massive ones but a little bit like embarkation day we grabbed a bite to eat there because we were hungry and it was fine but then amy got it the night before and it was a lot better and this is on air so on air is another big venue for a lot of the trivia and those types of things because it's kind of built into a little stage so they've had like family feud a lot of karaoke things down here. 
Um, it's built to be kind of like a makeshift studio with a little DJ booth and all of that stuff. What's interesting is as you progress throughout the day, your kind of areas that you go to change a little bit too. So for instance, we have a tendency to start up and then we work our way aft. And then through the evening, we work our way more forward on the promenade. Um, forward on the promenade is what they call the entertainment district. And that's where we're going next. So in the entertainment district, it really is just the aft of the ship, but it kind of is stapled by two large theaters. One being the one being the Royal Theater, which is behind me. It's closed at the moment, but we have some footage from previous evenings, uh, which is their main theater. So a lot of their bigger shows like Grease or Columbus the Musical, that kind of stuff is all held in there. The other side is gonna be Studio B, which is an ice skating rink. Yep, you heard that right, ice skating rink. So you can actually go ice skating in there. Plus they have a show called 1887, which is a ice skating themed um, kind of Jules Verne style um, production, which was really cool. So right now it's set up with Park West with a bunch of artwork, but behind this wall over here, behind this wall over here is actually the attic, which is like the comedy club. It turns into a nightclub in the evenings. And what good cruise ship would be without, but there is a casino. So there's a big version of the casino and then there is the non-smoking version. This happens to be the non-smoking version and they call it Casino Royale. So behind me is Central Park and this is one of my favorite places on the ship. It is open air, so it's open to the elements. There are a lot of, I think they pipe in noises to make it sound like there's birds or crickets or whatnot, but there are a lot of live plants out here and it really has that true like park feel and I haven't seen that on a cruise ship before, so I think that that's really interesting. This is also home to a lot of the high-end specialty dining restaurants like Jamie Oliver's Place um, and then one of our favorites, Chop Grill, and the wine tasting, if you signed up for that in our wine aficionado, that is here too. If you remember when we were on the promenade too, I said that there was a bar that went up and dog called the Rising Tide Bar. That's the top section, <laughs> which it's enclosed because, well, you're down stairs, you're actually inside of. <laughs> and then like Lori, Lauren said, that's Jamie Oliver's. This restaurant is called Park Cafe. It's actually an included. So it's going to have sandwiches and little bites and those types of things. But it's pretty cool because there's a little bars along the way. There's little alcoves that you can sit in. And then back here you have 150 Park Fair directly in front of us. And if you go to the right, Chops Grill. So typically at this point throughout mm -hmm. our day, mm -hmm. uh, we're wrapping up. Mm -hmm. It's becoming the evening hours. We're getting ready to rest for a new port day or whatever's going on the next day. Mm -hmm. And the ever heated debate starts to enrage. Oh no. Stairs or elevator? Stairs, <laughs> team stairs. And I'm team stairs most of the time. But the problem is after a big dinner at Chops, a few drinks at one of the bars and a show, and it's now midnight, the elevator looks dang good. So let us know, are you team stairs or team elevator? And for the record, there were times we did a challenge to see which went faster. Oh, the stairs definitely went faster, but I didn't have to do them. So I still think I won. For this, we're taking the elevator. And as promised, we're gonna talk a little bit about our stateroom mm -hmm. into your balcony category. Mm -hmm. If you're curious to see our actual stateroom before we've lived in it mm -hmm. for a week, you don't wanna see it right now. Um, you can go back to the last week's video mm -hmm. uh, where we actually did our embarkation day. We walked around and showed you the stateroom before all of our stuff took over mm -hmm. in Mexico and Honduras. <laughs> so the interior balcony, mm -hmm. what are your thoughts? We tried it. <laughs> I missed the water. I missed the water too. All right. So my, it was kind of my requirement. I really wanted a balcony. Um, and after doing this for a week, I can say I, I missed the water. Yeah, and so we know now for us, and, and this is a really good option if you're looking to save just a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. We didn't necessarily think that it was enough money saved to warrant the just see, well, you can see. I mean, you can hear the pools up there, which you yeah. can from the other side too. Not as bad. Um, but as you can see, our view is our neighbors, essentially. Right, and yes, we get a little bit of Central Park, but for the little bit more expense, the water is worth it. Yeah. So. If you have questions about Harmony of the Seas or anything else that we have showed you in this video, please leave us a comment down below. Also, we have a new affiliate. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. If you would like to learn how you can use miles and points, mm -hmm. I know this is shocking for the RV side because nobody ever talks about this. Um, you can use miles and points to help or completely pay for 
cruises, airfare, hotels, rental cars, travel, just travel. Just travel. Um, let us know because we have some insider information now. This is something we've done for several years yep. and has really helped us and we are so excited to share it with you. Yes, we are. So mm -hmm. uh, you're going to see a link for what's called the daily drop down below as well as some of our favorite cards that we mm -hmm. use mm -hmm. on a daily basis to accumulate those points. And by all means, feel free to ask us questions because this is one of those topics that we both could probably talk about for a while because it's saving money uh, along with taking advantage of points and systems and all those things. So it's kind of like a challenge. You know how you set the GPS time and try to beat the GPS? It's kind of what it is for yep. me. Well, and for us, paying for our RV travels <laughs> mm -hmm. is helping pay for our other cruises and mm -hmm. other travels that you'll well see coming here very, very soon. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, don't worry, we have all the content coming from this cruise. I know we filmed this later mm -hmm. in the cruise, so we knew the ship a little bit better. So, so. And just for our RV family, yes, we're coming back. This is only a week. We'll be back to the RV. We are, and we've got some fun trips coming up very soon that we're excited to share with you. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. Bye, Mom.